and then. All right, guys. Well, uh, he's going to start making his way up here, but uh, a lot of you guys know Zach Miller, one of your own. Uh, pretty excited about him. But before he does this, I'm going to change out the batteries in here. So if you can mute me, Michael. CJ, you got a good story? Come on, man. Come on, man. First one where is this game? All right. What's your story, CJ? All right. Well, outside of my broken hand story, I was like in kindergarten. And I was out riding on my puppy. So like you guys know on the side of your handlebars how it had like the rubber and then like it came up. It was like yeah. an extra little rope so you couldn't like slide your hand off there. Yes. Well that piece came off and it was like metal there, just the bar. Like, oh, no need to be safe. Who cares, right? Back when I didn't wear seatbelts either. Um, so I was riding, I was in a loop. I lived on 29th Avenue in this place called, I don't remember. Um, and, and like, I was, I go through my driveway and I go like this way. I go out in this one guy's driveway. It was like a, it was like a semi circle. It was great. And it had like this slope. So you could like go up it and just like cruise down. And I thought I was bees and knees back then. So I'm sitting there and I came from Community Christian School. And we had more polos back then, and I was in my little khakis and my light blue polo. Oh, yeah. I'm like, okay, girls. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a pink stick. Anyway, so I'm sitting there, and like, the whole end of the driveway kind of fell off. There was one that had, like, this big of a rock at the end of it. And it, it, was, it wasn't like there was a gap, it was like a ramp. So I'm like, totally gonna hit that, you know what I mean? Like, it'd be cool, go off road. Well, I don't know how, this day, I still don't know how. I hit that thing, and I went flying over my handlebars, and all I remember is hitting the ground, and looking up, and looking at my shirt, because I had blood, like, profusely pouring out of this area right here. Oh, the handlebar. You know it's dumb, yeah. The handlebar, had like, it didn't rip my shirt, I don't know what happened, but like, my shirt went up, and like, ripped it. So, needless to say, I have a scar on my. Yeah, it's like those weird shoes. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, um, I've um, gained some new scars over the past year, year and a half. Um, so, and it's kind of like something that's really changed my life. Um, but first, I want to pray. So, uh, back ahead. Uh, dear God, just thank you for this night. Thank you for everybody that's here. Um, speak through me tonight, God. Um, let it be your words, not mine. And uh, just I need to just get through everything. I'm just gonna pray, man. So, um, if you want to put the picture, first picture out there. Yeah, that's that's one scar that I have. Those are screws in my head. Yeah. Next one. Okay, you can kind of see it. I'm the one on the left. The lowest one, and I got the, that's from my brain surgery, um, but that's a bunch of guys that shaved their head with me. Okay, we'll get to that. All right, so most of you probably know a little bit of my story, or at least like a summary thing, um, but for those of you who don't, bear with it. Um, doctors found a tumor on January 16th, 2010, and uh, 
they wanted to do an endoscopic biopsy to see if they could find out um, what it was, which is an endoscopic biopsy is like a microscopic um, tube that goes down and finds a tumor and like takes a little bite out of it and takes it out so they can like test it and see what it is. Anyway, had that done, inconclusive, they couldn't find out what it is with the piece they got. I was scheduled to have a more invasive brain surgery, um, more dangerous, like where they six inch incision on the back of my head, crack my head open, all that stuff. Goody. So, answer to prayer, day before I'm scheduled to go in for that, doctors call, I'm, I was gonna drive up to Chance and Gainesville, that's the hospital I went to. Um, I was gonna drive up there that morning and doctors call and they're like, hey, we're not gonna do that surgery. We're gonna try a round of chemo and see how the tumor responds. Okay, so I get around the chemo, they do an MRI, the tumor's shrinking, so then they're able to diagnose me with a type of brain cancer called germinoma. So, first of all, I heard the word cancer like right out of the gate, like they thought that's what it was right out of the gate, but they did the biopsy just to like make sure. Okay, cancer involving you, that first off, you're already freaking out. Like I was just sitting there in the hospital bed like, seriously? Uh, no, I, like I didn't believe them. It was like unreal. My parents are crying. I'm, I start bawling because I don't. I don't even know. I start bawling because more because they were bawling, and so I didn't even like realize what was happening because I just didn't set in. Anyway, got past that. Accepted that it was cancer. Um, had three rounds of chemo where I would go in up to Shans for three days of medicine, hooked up to an IV um, for three straight days, feeling worse and worse and worse as the days went on. Um, and then I had six um, weeks of radiation in Jacksonville um, at the Prothon Therapy Institute. And so, and now I am been, there's no been, been no trace of the cancer for one year now. So that's... So, um, yeah, I've been healed of my cancer, but I still have um, scars that I'm left with. Um, and they're a reminder of God's faithfulness to me. Um, I went from calling myself a Christian to um, actually like living it out. And then I went from believing in God to having a relationship with Him. So um, I really like Psalm, uh, the book of Psalms. Uh, so I, what I did was to write, like kind of use with my story, I used um, a bunch of different Psalms and put them together and it kind of like writes my story. Okay, so um, you can put the first... Yeah, um, this first uh, little thought is called Falling Short. Yeah, and you can read along if you want. Um, Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion, it haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. But I will call on God, and the Lord will rescue me. Morning, noon, and night, I cry out my distress. O oh God, listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I cry to you for help when my heart is overwhelmed. Okay. So, you're probably like, what the heck? What does that have to do with anything? Here we go. So, I grew up Christian home. Loved calling myself a Christian. My dad was a pastor. I loved bragging about how he was a pastor. And I'd be with all my Christian friends. i put on that little pastor's kid smile and play that little Christian role and then I'd get to school and get with friends that weren't Christian and I'd be totally different. Totally different. I was cussing. I was treating girls with disrespect, doing anything to get a laugh. I was listening to bad music. Okay, I, was, I wasn't that bad, but it was not Christian. So, um, I would um, just, when we moved to Florida a couple years ago, I, I, like, I decided to go further away from God than I already was just to try and fit into the new situation, to the new school, I was trying to just fit in any way I could. And I was letting the people around me dictate who I was. I wasn't letting me dictate who I was and shine for God. Um, so I wasn't honoring God in my words or actions, and I, I was a sinner, and we're all sinners. I'm sure we all have our problems, but, um, but God had more for me than just putting on an act my whole life. He didn't want me to just play Christian for my entire life. Um, he wanted to be a part of my life every single day and have a relationship with me. Um, so when I learned the news that I had a brain cancer, I, had, I figured I had two choices. I could either decide to trust God and lean into Him, or I could run further away from Him than I already was. 
Um, so I obviously picked the second option, or the first option, or I probably wouldn't be up here tonight, so um, that's good. But um, even though we're all sinners and have fallen short, we can always make a decision to turn back to God. We can always make a decision to say, okay, I'm done with that. I want to I trust God and go back to Him. Um, and the great thing about God, He won't like use that against you. He won't say, oh, you were just doing this and you're coming back to me. No, no, no. He accepts you just how you are. He wants you. He's accepting you just how you are. Um, and He's, uh, he's going to love you just the same. Um, so I, I just kind of have a question to end each thought. Um, this one is, are you playing Christian or do you really know God in a personal, everyday way? Just kind of ask that and answer that in your heart and be real with yourself. Like, don't just, don't put on a show in yourself. That'd be bad. Um, just kind of just answer that to yourself. Um, so next thought, thought two, trusting God. Um, lead me to the towering rock of safety, for you are my safe refuge, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. In my distress, I pray to you, O Lord. Um, the Lord answered me. The Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. But I am trusting you, O Lord, saying you are my God. My future is in your hands. Rescue me. He sent out his word and healed me, snatching me from the door of death. That Let me praise the Lord for his grace love great love, and for the wonderful things he has done for me. Um, I just want to kind of zoom in on that first, that first, ver that first little bit there. Um, rock. It says, uh, let, lead me to the time rock of safety. Um, the, it was a different language back in that day, and the word that they used in, to write that was Petra. Um, in Petra, we think of a rock, we think of like a boulder, a little rock, right? Okay, rock, Petra, in their language, now, like a huge cliff, like the side of a mountain, like enormous. So just read that with a different like thought now. Lead me to the towering side of a mountain of safety. Like it's it's a lot different when you read like that. I, I thought anyway. Okay. But yeah, that's cool. Um, so deciding to trust God was like the best decision I ever made. Um, I had to continually tell myself that like no matter what I was going to face, I'm going to trust God with it. Um, and the awesome thing about trusting God is He's always right there to provide what you need when you need it. He's always right there to provide what you need when you need it. That's real. Okay. Um, so I did trust God when I was going in for brain surgery um, and let a doctor I just met drill a hole in my skull and take a piece of the tumor out. Um, another surgery to put a port in my chest for chemotherapy where they would stick the IV. It was like a little plastic thing under my skin and it was just so I didn't have to get poked and prodded a whole lot more. But... Still was not fun. Um, and another surgery to put six screws called fiducials, which is what you saw earlier, um, in my head. Um, so, and then I had to trust God in all three chemo treatments. So you can put the picture of me in bed. Yeah, don't look too hot in that picture. Um, uh, <laughs> for each, uh, I already explained this, but like for each one, I'd be there for three days and I just feel worse and worse. Then I'll get home and literally feel like garbage for about a week and just lay flat on a couch doing nothing um, and it was supposed to take two treatments of chemo but the tumor wasn't completely gone after the second so I had to have actually have three all together um, so I had to trust God when I had to spend three hours in an MRI machine I don't know maybe some of you have had an MRI machine but I had to have three hours of it because they were taking a picture of my brain and my entire spine and they wanted a bunch of little segments so I had to lay like this, like this for three hours I mean, not fun. Um, I had music, but it was also, there were a bunch of noises that the machine was making. But um, I had to trust God with all three of my spinal taps. I don't know, do you, any of you know what that is? Okay, spinal tap. I would sit on a bed. I would bend over like this, expose my back, okay? She, uh, the doctor, he, she, whoever it was, would take a needle, long needle, stick it in between my vertebrae and my back, and it was the needle would drip out spinal fluid into a little thing and then they would then they would test it I had three of those and no anesthesia no pain meds no nothing you're just you're like okay go doc do it okay yeah yeah I trust you God with that yeah big time um, I had to trust God during my radiation treatment treatments what hap which happened every day um, for six weeks so I would go Monday through Friday up to Jacksonville 
wouldn't live in my house, wouldn't sleep in my bed. I would be at my grandma's house. Um, I would go every morning or afternoon, whenever my time was, to have to be every day. Um, took about an hour, hour uh, with the commute, probably two hours. Um, so that was not fun. Even yeah, put bigger radiation. That was me. This is the mask I had to wear. They strapped me down to a bed, and I was laying face down like this. And they would strap it down so I literally could barely talk. Like they would ask me questions, and I'd be like, I can't wear my chin. <laughs> I mean, like seriously, it was so tight, and it took me forever to get used to it. Cause like when I would leave on the weekends and like come back on Monday, I'd have a headache because like I hadn't been used to it doing it all week, you know. So that I had, I had that every day. I got to dress up in a nice, pretty gown every day too, guys. Nice. Um, so, uh, yeah, I couldn't feel it happening, like the radiation, um, but it did make me feel like weird and sick sometimes and tired and stuff. Um, but all this tr trust helped me to realize something. Um, it's kind of like a big thing, and it seems simple, but accepting it is like really, really hard to do. Um, I'm going to say it. God is in control. You me? God is in control. Okay. Um, cancer left me stripped of everything that I had. So um, the close-up pic of me with, yeah, that was me. I don't have eyebrows or hair, if you didn't notice that. Um, <laughs> so I lost my hair, um, eyebrows. I wasn't allowed to finish the basketball scene. You can put that next pick up. I look, look how scrawny I am. I'm just pale and white. Yeah. Um, wasn't allowed to finish the basketball season. Wasn't able to go to school every day and hang out with friends. Everything that I had put my confidence in was taken from me. My basketball skills, my good looks, you know, I mean, yeah. um, Having lots of friends, that was gone. All that was left was me and God. Like, that was all that stayed constant throughout this whole thing. I mean, um, when, when you're stripped of everything, um, you rely on what you're left with, and God was there. He was there. And you realize what really matters and what lasts forever. Because all that stuff is just... All this stuff is going to go away. I mean, God is going to be eternal. So, um, okay. I chose to trust God not only because I was in a vulnerable um, situation, um, but because he was the only thing that didn't change from chemo. He was the strength that continued even when I couldn't play basketball. He was the always present friend when I needed someone to talk to. Um, and I realized God's plan for my life was drastically different than the plan I had for my life. So, I don't... Like, if you think, some people, I don't know if you do this, but some people, like, think ahead, like, where do I want to be, and so and so. I didn't have brain cancer sketched in there anywhere. If, I, I don't think any of us do. You know what I mean? Like, you don't see that coming. That kind of just hits you, and you just kind of roll with the punches. So, um, but that, that just shows you that uh, God is in complete control. Um, and since we don't have control, um, trusting God, the one who does, the one who does have control over everything is our only option if we're smart. If we're if we're dumb, we can play. Oh, I'll just hang on to the stuff of this world, and it'll be enough for me. Okay, God is the only one that's going to be enough for you. I'm just going to let you know that right now. Okay, so question: Are you trusting God with the tough situations you are facing? Are you trusting God? Are you truly trusting God with the tough tough situations that are coming your way? It's a tough life. I understand it. It's a tough being a teen. It's a tough. It's tough. I get it. There's tough situations every day. I don't know what you're facing, but are you trusting God with it? Okay. Third thought. Um, I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. There it is. That is that rock. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. My hope is in him. Let them see that this is your doing, that you yourself have done it, Lord. I wait patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground. He steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. And that's my prayer for you guys tonight. Um, Thought three, receiving strength and healing. Yeah, okay. Um, there were many things I faced during my battle with cancer um, that I thought there were no, there was no way I could handle it. I thought like, 
sometimes I felt like defeated and I was like, is there even a point to even like putting up a fight to this? And um, But God sustained me by giving me the courage I needed. Um, he blessed me with strength and, and overwhelming peace about the whole situation. Um, like a peace like um, I talked about spinal taps earlier. I would literally start giggling before a spinal tap. That's, the, that's what God did. I, that's People don't giggle before they get a needle shoved in their back. I'm sorry. That's just that's not a natural instinct. Oh, a needle. <laughs> no, that that doesn't happen. You know what I mean? Like, so um, I felt safe knowing God was on my side and would provide me with what I needed when I needed it. And anytime I was fearful of something to come, God would calm my spirit. Um, when I was nervous about surgery, God brought laughter again. Um, when I was anxious about spinal taps, God brought peace and bravery. Um, God's constant hand in my struggle helped me to conquer uh, anything I faced. I could not have done it without Him, like right there next to me, holding me up. Um, and people ask me, like, how did you, how did you deal with that? You're only, you were only 15 years old. You're going through all this crap, and I'm like, God would, God would rather hold me up. I was literally, even when I like felt like I couldn't walk, it was just like God was just like right there. Just here you go, here you go, Zach. You're good. Um, it, and another thing that helped me, um, like to like encourage me and help me to like keep up the fight. Um, there were many like cards and prayers and letters I got, just ridiculous, from all over the world too, not just like in the US and stuff, it was crazy. Um, and then at my first chemo, I actually met a kid who, um, who was leaving. He was done and his tumor was gone and he was healed. So that was huge, that was huge for me, for me to see like first chemo, that success, like I was just like, wow, this I can be healed. I can I can beat this. Not to mention, um, forty of you, nearly forty people shaved their heads with me when I had to shave the locks off. So if you did that, just give me a little whoop whoop. Or, okay, all right. Yeah, including one woman, might I add. Um, that's pretty crazy. She had long black hair too. So um, you can throw. Yeah, you're good. Okay, you're on it. All right. Um, God encouraged me through His Word. Um, like I would go to the Bible and I would, I would need, need to hear a certain thing at a certain time, and God would just send me directly to a verse like that. I was just like, really, really, that's exactly what I need to hear. Um, so that was awesome. Um, and as I saw God pro providing for like my needs and stuff, it drew me closer and closer to Him. Like if somebody's giving you stuff, it's gonna like draw you like closer. Like this, that's basically how it worked with me and God. Um, and uh, God was giving me what I needed freely. I didn't have to buy it. I didn't do anything to deserve it. But he was giving it to me, and he was giving it to me without fail. Um, so I desired to just, like, thank him all the time. Um, and God's provision in tough times, it's overwhelming, guys. It, it really is. And the only possible response um, is to lean into him wholeheartedly. Because if you're getting at what you need from him, and you're trusting him with your whole situation... Aren't you going to want to go closer and closer to him? I mean, it just makes sense. So no matter the situation you face, God will always be ready to provide exactly what you need when and where you need it. You can rest easy knowing God has your back. Um, we all have things we need healing and strength for. Um, so here's the question. What areas in your life do you need God's healing and strength? What, what are those areas where you need that from God? Um, because he will provide that. If you trust him and you lean into him, he will provide that for you. So, thought four. Last one. Here we go. Whew. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O oh God. I thirst for God, the living God. Where can I go and stand before him? For you have rescued me from death. So now I can walk in your presence, O oh God, in your life-giving light. Come and listen, all you... All you who fear God, and I will tell you what he did for me. For I cried out to him for help, praising him as I spoke. If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But God did listen. He paid attention to my prayer. Praise God who did not ignore my prayer or withdraw his unfailing love from me. Unfailing love, guys, that's big. Uh, let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he has done for me. He forgives all my sins and he heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. Um, God used my entire cancer journey to accomplish one thing. You think, oh, 
well, he gave him all this stuff. He wanted to do a whole bunch of things. No, one thing. He wanted a relationship with me. That's it. He wanted to have a relationship with me where I didn't just like give my heart to him and say, play Christian, play that little Christian role like I was doing. He desires more, more than that from his followers. He wants more than that from all of us. Um, it, I, he wants an intimate and personal relationship. Not just like a, hey, how you doing, God? I hope I have a good day. Okay. Yeah. No, he wants, like, he wants you to talk to him every day and read his word and learn from him. He has so much to offer, guys. Um, I was able to form this relationship with God through my cancer. Um, and I hope it doesn't take cancer for you guys to form that relationship. Honestly, don't let it take cancer for you guys to form a, a true lifelong relationship with him. Because it's you. It's, it's what you need. It's, it, it'll help you, I promise. Um, when you make this relationship the desire of your heart, um, you must know that it's not a one-sided deal. Like, you might think, oh, I got I to gotta do everything. I got to do all the work. No, no, no. God is pursuing you. God is wanting you and coming for you. And he's available. He's like this. He's all the time. All the time. No matter what. No matter what you're facing. No matter what you've done. You could have just sinned. And you can say, oh, crap. I, I want God. I want God right now. Right here. Okay. So, um, God is pursuing you and is constantly available to you. Believe that. All right. I know all the different ways... Um, Things uh, that are available to you and uh, that pursue us in this world. Um, they can be things like TV, computer, cell phone, or on the other end of the spectrum, like drugs, alcohol, partying, um, things like that. Um, so would you rather, um, you have to make a decision. Would you rather have a relationship with God, which is eternal, or would you, um, who, tr who loves and accepts you just the way you are, I forgot this part. Um, a heavenly Father who forgives you of sins, protects you, and provides everything you need. That, that's all God. That's all describing God. That's not describing the ways of this world. Okay? That's all describing God. Loves and accepts you, forgives sins, protects you, provides for you. Or are you going to choose sexual TV shows, gossiping on the computer, constant technique, texting, smoking weed, getting drunk, and making a fool of yourself? That's kind of like the choice you're left with. And while all those th things may seem like the thing to do now, like, oh, man, the world's just like, yeah, come on. It's fun. It's the best. It's awesome. Okay. Remember that one of, those day one of these days, those things are all going to be bye-bye. They're going to fade. They're going to go away, um, along with this world. So when Christ comes, which he's promised to do, which he's going to do, um, are you going to be wanting to hold holding on to that weed, that partying, that drunkenness, whatever? The cell phone, the TV. Are you going to want to hold on to that? Or are you going to want to hold on to an eternal relationship that you formed with your father? The God who loves you. The God who accepts you. The God who's pursuing you. Okay. Um, so, now, Jesus Christ has his own scars. I'm sure many of you know this story. And it's a very important story. He died on the cross for you and me. And um, while most times people see his dying as like, a way to gain forgiveness, like, oh, he died so I can, like, pray to him when I do bad stuff and get forgiven for it. Okay, I want us to look at it, like, a different way. Um, I, I think it also shows God's desire to have a relationship with you, okay? He sent his son, his son. Like, if you had, you, I know you guys don't have kids, but a father and a son's bond is, like, you can't break that. And he sent his son knowing he was going to die, okay? For you, for sinners, for people who do bad stuff, he sent his son, okay? Um, and he wanted a relationship, because he wanted a relationship with us, with us sinners, with us sinners, again. Jesus rose again to show God is worthy um, to be praised and more than capable to sustain us. God's desire by sending his son was not that he would simply accept him into our heart, but that we would connect with him on a relational level. That we would make that relationship and strive for that relationship that he's striving for with us. Okay? Not just to be a believer, um, not just um, be a believer, but a follower and a friend of Jesus Christ. That sounds weird. Like, I've never met this guy, Jesus Christ, but um, how am I supposed to be friends with him? All this stuff? You can be friends with him, guys. I'm telling you. If you just make the effort, because he's right there waiting for you. 
The, the relationship with God that is possible through Jesus Christ's scars is available and pursuing you tonight, right now. It's happening right now, okay? So stop running and using excuses. Trust that God is enough for you. The, the things of this world aren't ever going to be enough. You're always going to want more. I promise you. God is enough. This world will never bring you the satisfaction that all of us seek. God can provide us this satisfaction if we allow him to do so. I promise you. This is the decision you are left with and no one can make it for you. It's between you and God. Period. And you and God. The relationship I form with God is everlasting. I will give him glory for my healing all the rest of my life. God allowed me to go through brain cancer for a reason and he healed me for a reason. So I will hold tightly to his plan for my life, continuing to grow in my relationship with him every day. I have one more question for you tonight. You guys ready? All right, it's a big one. Aren't you tired of living for yourself to please the world instead of having a real everyday relationship with God, the one who cares and loves you the most? I'm read that again. Aren't you tired of living for yourself to please the world? You're pleasing the world by doing those things that you do on the computer, at parties, all that stuff. Pleasing the world. Instead of having a real, tangible, everyday relationship, talk to God every day, the, with the one who cares and loves you. Okay? Just let that set, set in a little bit. Like, He wants you. Okay? So stop, stop making all the excuses and pushing them away and saying, my problem's too big for you. That's... No, there's never going to be a problem too big for God. I'm sorry. God created this universe, and he's got domain over it. He can do what he wants, all right? I'm pretty sure he can handle it. So um, I just want to, the band can come out. Um, I'm pretty much wrapping it up here. So I just hope those questions really, um, I hope you answer them truthfully, and I hope you really are real with yourself, because if you're not real with yourself, then you can't be real with God, okay? If you're not real with yourself, you can't be real with God. That's a huge thing, okay? So, um, Dan's coming up. I just want to close this in prayer. Uh, and then if you want to pray with somebody, there's people all around waiting to pray with you guys. Um, so, if you want to come to the altar, or if you just slip your hand up, whatever. Whatever it need be. Um, you just, you, if you need to do that, you do that tonight. Don't, don't hold back anymore, all right? Let's pray. Uh, dear God, um, thank you for being such a loving, um, strengthening God. Uh, who gives us exactly what we need when we need it, God? Um, I pray that uh, you would just uh, you would just hit home in the hearts of the people that needed that tonight, God. Um, that they would just stop running, um, stop making excuses, um, and just come to you um, in their time of trouble, whatever situation it may be, God. Just be with them, be near to them. Um, you're accepting them and you're pursuing them, God. So just uh, let them run right into that because they they I know they want it. I know they want it, God. Stop, stop pulling back. Help them to stop pulling back, Father. Um, we love you so much. Thank you for everything you've done in my life. Thank you for uh, giving me this chance to just share with these kids and uh, just help me to just uh, leave a mark and a uh, lasting impression on them. Just never